All right, hello folks. Hello everybody out in internet land. I'm back here painting again today. The last week of January. And all we have right now going on is rain. It's like a downpour every day here, so figured why not paint. Better than being outside in the rain. All right, so I'm going to grab a um Filbert brush. So let me tell you what I got up here. Nothing fancy. I just wanted to redo a painting I did several years ago and see if it looks any better. Kind of getting into that, seeing if I've improved. Uh, this is just going to be pretty much a lizard and crimson. I put a little bit of sienna down here, just in case I wanted a different, little bit different color uh, sand. But you can see it kind of mixed with the crimson, so you probably won't notice it. You may notice it when we when we get to the sand at the end. So it's just that little section right there. But the rest of it's all crimson that's just a lizard and crimson and i did it dry so my canvas i had a black canvas and i painted it dry so that's just paint on there there's no medium anywhere on the canvas now to make it easier for anybody that's not used to doing this it, i would probably start with some kind of liquid medium whether it be linseed oil very little of any of these things linseed oil liquid clear um liquid which i mean i started to use liquid is sitting right here that's one of my favorite things to use now so, <clears throat> so let's get started. We're going to make some clouds and just play with the sky for a little bit. Then I'm going to take some white, but I'm also going to just take just a tiny touch of the red back into it. I don't want to go up here with just pure white. So this will be another limited palette painting. You know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to get too many, too many colors out. And I've got a little filbert here, an old filbert. My wife bought me at a yard sale. You should see the amount of art supplies you can find at yard sales. So, all right, let's just think, let's just think here. Do, do, do. Where do we want a cloud? Where do we want our first cloud to be? Oh, actually, no, let's stop. Let's take a one inch first. I was gonna put clouds in. Let's figure out where we want the brightest part of the sky. So I'm gonna go back to a one inch. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself. Yeah, this is why I have to do these every so often to remind myself of what I'm doing. All right, so I think I want my moon to be all oh, somewhere about right there. So I'm going to start with just little circular strokes here. And I'm going to work out from those circular strokes. I'm not going to add any more white to this part of the painting. This is going to be the brightest spot right there, right there. But I'm going to work out into that color. And I'm just going to work down a little bit, work out, whatever you want to go. We're going to drag some of that white. You can use little circles like this, whatever. Doesn't really matter. You know, just bring some up here. Some of it's going to be clouds anyway, so if we put a little bit of this out, it helps with finding where we might want some light clouds and some dark clouds and things of that nature. Yeah, we're just working that color out. No more color added to that canvas. Or sorry, to the brush. Now, I can always go back and strengthen that if that's not dark enough. Uh, another little tip about painting seascapes is if you're ever worried about your horizon line, it doesn't matter to me as much on a black canvas, but you can always take a piece of tape. You always want to either have more sky or more ocean. You don't want to cut this canvas in half with a seascape. Uh, try to remember that rule of thirds, and that kind of helps you out. It's not necessary to get a ruler out in my opinion, but if you wanted to, I guess you could. Um, you're trying to achieve something like the golden ratio or something sure go for it whatever you want to do and i'm just working this brush all the way around the canvas but you can see i'm not really letting it get too bright on me i hope you can see that it's pretty color that uh, crimson on the black you could do this with any kind of uh, galaxy painting or anything but i'm thinking like a red you know red uh sunset or a, a nighttime scene the the moon is kind of Got that blood red effect going on. So, bring a little bit of color. We can cut our horizon anywhere on a black canvas. It's so much easier now. If you had a white canvas and you put dark color all the way down here, and it, it, it gets a little bit harder to uh, to figure out where you would stop with that. <clears throat> so that masking tape, painter's tape, whatever you have, would be be nice there. All right, that's good enough. And you're going to see that I've got my old two inch here that I kind of just covered the canvas. So I'm going to very lightly, let's go right there. 
And I'm barely putting any pressure on this brush as I'm using it. It's just mainly just kind of grazing over the canvas. Big strokes help so you don't kind of knock too much back in. Now, if there's a part you don't like, you can always knock it back into the canvas. Now, you could even add a little bit more crimson and make it darker. But I think for that, that's probably good. The only thing I would probably say on that is maybe... Just, I took a touch. I'm going to show you what I mean by a touch. Can you see the little bit of white that's on there now? Barely any white. I mean, it's just a... I want to come down just a little bit further with that. I want to let the sky be a little bit bigger than the uh, ocean. I think. Now, I can always change my mind when I get to it. That's the good thing, again, about painting a <clears throat> seascape on a black canvas. We can change it at any point. Now, I'm going to go back to my filbert brush. The filbert brush will... We'll get us going in the right direction, I believe. And we can do this with our finger, which I normally do, but sometimes I'll use a filbert, and I'll just plunk it down and add just a touch of crimson so it's not pure white. And if you just plunk it down, and then you just kind of spin that brush around. And you can make a nice little, pretty, pretty nice little circular shape. What you don't want to do is, is start chasing a shape here. What I mean by that is you're like, oh my lord, it's not a circle, okay? If it's not a circle, go back in. See, I don't really have a perfect circle here. And it doesn't have to be. That could be a, um, you know, um, three-quarters moon or something. But try not to spend all your time just worrying about uh, getting this perfect. Better for your moon to look a little bit wonky than for it to be this big, okay? You won't notice one that's that's a little bit wonky, but again, not too technical of anything. All right, now we can now we can start thinking of the clouds. And I kind of like that. If if you if you need to, you can always, of course, do. That. I didn't put hardly any paint up here, so I can just kind of set this set that right in by just kind of going over it just a little bit. But I'm going over it in different directions so that the moon doesn't look too weird. There we go. All right, so we'll have some dark clouds, some light clouds. We can use barely any paint here and kind of start thinking about clouds. Where do we want some clouds? I see one right here. And I like to let them ebb and flow, kind of like the ocean is going to do that. Let your, let your clouds just kind of reach wherever. And I'm just working that paint back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then we'll just kind of and we can get brighter as we get to the moon. That might make more sense. But something like that to start. And then I would take... Oh, <clears throat> let's take a clean one inch here. You could use the same brush you used before to, to blend. But I'm just going to blend back. See that little motion? I'm blending just the bottom of the cloud back. Just the bottom. And then just kind of give it a little fluff here and there. See how that makes a nice little cloud up there for us? We don't really have to work too hard at it. Sorry about that. I need to kick the wall. Thank you all. Okay, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit here. There we go. Sorry for the shakiness. All right. So, and you don't really have to define those clouds too much. Defining the top is nice. Um, but leaving a little bit of that undefined at the bottom. We don't know. Maybe there's a cloud under that one. You know, it just kind of disappears, and that's kind of what you want on a nighttime seascape. Typically, at night, clouds probably wouldn't even be that bright, but we can take some artistic license. You see this little blob right here? Uh, it kind of goes in here like this. Looks like a cloud to me, so let's put another one right there, and I'm going to start with the brightest spot, and just kind of take that brush and just... You can use it that way, you can use it this way as a little... I mean, you look a little more artistic when you do it this way, I think. And I'm just doing little circles, and I really just need to outline that. And then I'll go back in. I like this way, actually. I'll go back in and just put a little bit more color. Something in here. Something in here. Let that stretch out here, maybe. There we go. We'll grab our one inch again. I can see this one much better. <laughs> I'm trying to cut down on the glare for you guys, but it's making me not be able to see still. There's going to be a fix for this one day, I guarantee it. And then maybe just kind of tap that out to where it just kind of has that little tail on it. 
But let it get darker as it goes away from that moon. And that's what would naturally happen. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still got some congestion. So if I, you're like, that seems like an odd jump in the video. What'd you do while you were going? It's probably because I stopped it to cough. I kind of think right here would be another good one. We don't want to put too many. Heck, we can do this one, this painting fairly fast. The harder I push, the brighter spot I'm going to get. You can do this with a fan brush, by the way, so don't think you have to get your filberts out if you don't like a filbert. Maybe just a little extra little arm on her there. There we go. Grab our brush again. Two or three different one inches out here. I keep grabbing the one, wrong one. You know, typically, I mean, I'm doing pretty good circles. Now, if this was a white canvas, I'd be a little bit more careful with these clouds and blending. So, because you're going to see more of that um, <clears throat> color stretched out than you will on this black canvas. Black canvases can make even the, a new painter seem like they're experienced, I think. They did for me when I started. I still do. <laughs> make you guys think I can paint and I just use black canvases, right? The magic trick. Well, that's three clouds. I mean, see, I, okay, let's talk about something here. If we didn't like a cloud, like I said, on a black canvas or even on a white canvas, you just do a little different color. Right here, this little piece of kind of, I don't like that. So I'm just going to take that brush, and knock that back in the sky, and then just kind of blend it away. So I really don't see it. Now, anytime you get to where you're like, oh, I need something else because. Uh, it's just not dark enough. You could always take a little crimson. This is the crimson brush I was using to begin with. And put back in here. Find your your dark. Find your dark. If you needed another color to go with that crimson, you could grab some um, Payne's Gray or, or probably a, a lavender would be the best, honestly. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. I think we need a couple little things. They don't have to be uh, super big clouds, but I can see a little bit up here just kind of meandering a little bit, a little um, detail or a little shape on the cloud more than what it had. But I'm not adding much paint at all. It's just kind of what was already on my brush. I didn't reload it. There we go. And then I can just kind of see how that one's much darker. But it still ha it has some kind of a shape to it now than just the color. Maybe there's one right here like that. I don't know how it goes. It's wherever it wants to, I guess. Clouds are, uh, clouds are the freest thing in nature, according to someone special. All right. So let them be. Let them be free. Let them be. Uh, let them go wherever you think they need to go. Just take the brush and let it go. Try not to be too perfect with this. See, I don't, I don't care that I did that one. This is one of those things you should probably watch brand paint and then paint. Not that you need to watch me paint. You guys know what you're doing. Half the time I don't. I add a little bit of crimson back in there. I kind of, kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think we should probably... <clears throat> Excuse me. We should probably do something here. Uh-oh. Let's tap that one right across this, the, the moon. I about said the sun. And then just blend it a little bit with a finger, maybe. Now, one thing I used to do, I, I used to teach this one. You could do it in any, just any color you wanted to if you came to class. You could do crimson, thalo blue or Prussian blue, whichever one I had out. Um, thalo green, sap green, Indian yellow, any of those colors that I had with me, people could choose to do it. And some people did the yellow. Most people like the blood, the, the bloody sea. I don't know why that says something about us all. But... This would be a good one just to experiment with what color. As long as it's transparent, you can use it on a black canvas. Now, what if it's not transparent? You can still use it on a black canvas. It's going to be a different experience for you, though. Not going to work the same way. It might be even better. I don't know. I don't typically do that. 
Got a big red streak there I don't like. Now, we can take, let's just switch to a little, I, you know, I grabbed different brushes, guys. You could do this, all of this, this clouds, and everything that I'm getting ready to do with just a fan brush. So, don't think you have to get fancy and, and put things in here. I'm sorry. Don't think you have to get fancy and use 18 different brushes. I have them laying here. I, I'm fortunate to have plenty, so... Maybe a little something just connect the bottom of the painting to the top. Clouds just kind of, kind of come on down here. Typically, they'd be bigger towards the horizon, but it, but in my world, they're just kind of stringy tonight. Just kind of stringy. You'll see a lot of these if you go to the beach. And again, you could use that fan brush just to tap some more up here if you wanted to. And I'm at the end. I don't know. Let's take our two inch brush and I like to take two inch and just kind of stretch these when I do them. Stretch them out. There we go. Got your big clouds, you got some little ones going on. Whatever we need. If you don't like those, just remember, cover them back up. Doesn't really matter. Well, I need a knife. We need us a knife and hopefully I brought one. Here we go. So I'm always, uh, I keep my paint brushes because i clean them surprisingly right i clean them and i keep them somewhere else besides where i paint which probably doesn't make any sense doesn't make a lick of sense actually all right i'm gonna take just a tiny bit of white see how little i have on my knife there that's how little you need for this and i add just a little crimson in there now the white would actually mix with the crimson but i don't want to just start with pure white i want it to be pretty bright though i don't want to put too much crimson now this is where you decide, hey, where where does my uh, where does my C actually begin? Oh, I'm gonna say right there. And to start off, I'm just gonna use a knife here and just kind of go back. If you've ever made a water line? That's all you're doing right now. And you really I probably should have started over here and worked out. Your brightest spot would be under that moon. And you don't need much paint. Don't start with big globs of paint. And make sure you leave, like right there, a little separation. I'm going to use two fingers there. That little separation of the dark and the light between the, each line of white. Got to have that. Now, you don't want to neglect this side, but you also don't want to have too much over there. Oh, see, that's too much, probably. I'm going to leave it, but it's probably too much. Brightest here, working out to the dark would be the easiest and the, and the most... Uh, Effective, I guess I should say. Try to make sure you're, you're trying to stay fairly level. If you're worried about it, again, you could take a ruler, you could take tape, um, so you have a nice straight line, whatever you need. But for me, I, I can usually just do this and make it look okay. Not great. I don't consider myself the seascape master or anything. I like doing them. Steve, when we would teach in classes and people would always want to seascape a lot of places we'd go, I'd have to teach the seascapes. So I started doing more of them. Here's a guy that's lived in the mountains all his life and starting to paint the sea. Yeah, makes sense, huh? All right. Now, I mean, is that enough? I don't know. You could take a little bit brighter color, and I, I caution you on this one. Watch what I do. Just right under this right under this moon maybe a little bit of white almost pure white just a tint of sorry just a a drop of or i say a touch of crimson yeah this is where it gets hard for me to keep it um nice and straight this is where a ruler or some kind of maybe even a mall stick would help here I'm not that worried about it though, guys. I don't, art to me doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it, I don't go like this, it's probably going to turn out okay in my mind, at least. All right? Hope everybody's well. I'm going to try to start doing one of these a week. That's my goal. I've been setting goals here. And, uh, you know, I may do two or three paintings a week and tape them or record them uh, and then just release them once in a week, one time a week. Different days, I think I like a, a Wednesday release and a, sometimes a Saturday release or maybe a Friday here and there. Would be nice. 
Over here we can kind of soften those out if we want to. Let them bring back in some of that dark. See that? This is just the background. Um, the background water, I can't speak today. But yeah, so we'll have more of these and we'll start getting serious about this stuff. I've got classes coming up in person if anybody's ever in the Smoky Mountain area. Got some corporate events and things of that nature probably coming up. And like I told you last time, I've got my Alaska trip and all that stuff. I went outside my line there, guys. So we'll just, you, you could use a brush or your finger. Just trying to put that back into the sky. I just, I'm just setting that down. I think it looks a little nicer if it's not so chunky. See that? It looks like moonlight shining there. And what you're going to want to do when we lay out our, our wave here. Actually, you may be able to see this on the... I don't want that big, but about right there is your bright spot. Okay? And I'll show you how we can get that in there. But yeah, if you're ever in the area and you want to come by for a class or something, yell at me. I bet you we can work something out. All right. All right. Actually, that looks pretty good. You can throw you a couple palm trees in here and and be done with it. We may work on some of those clouds in the sky. I like them. They're fun. This is super easy painting, guys. We're not to the hard part, and even the hard part doesn't really worry me that much. All right. Now, we could bring that all the way down, just have one big crashing wave. Which, I'm trying to decide if that's what I want to do now. What does it look like about? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think that would look better for this one. I was going to do some background waves and things, but I think I'm just going to let this kind of keep coming down again. We want to keep it the brightest right behind our little bright spot of the... right under our moon, I'm sorry. Working that out. I'm going to get smaller. That makes sense. It's bigger back there because it's closer to the, I guess, closer, and then it just kind of gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Back in there. And this will make the painting a little bit easier, actually. So you want an easier wave you can sorry an easier seascape when you're watching this this is going to be an easier one you can already see we're two-thirds done almost and it's what the video is only about 20 minutes long so far so probably not going to be a very long one unless i spend a lot of time on something i don't typically do maybe 20 minutes for the wave would be a long time we want to save some of that dark behind this wave you never want to just have you never want to sock Tons and tons of white on these things. They don't look good. Uh, you'll be disappointed. We're going to have our wave kind of build here, crashing over. Probably have a rock or something. It'll probably be an hour video. You know me, I'm not a fast painter, and I always go back and try to change things that I don't like. So The only way to learn is to play with your paintings, really. I, I, some people will tell you to stop, and I, and I try to encourage that for people that are just starting. But once you get a little bit of experience under your belt, you're likely better to just play with it and, and see what happens. The worst, You know what the worst thing could be. You could completely mess it up and just have to throw it away or scrape it off. And that's easy to do. Maybe I should do a video on that one. You guys ever... Get a, a good canvas and you don't want to waste a canvas. The best thing you do is just take some paint thinner. Clean the canvas off. Wipe it down. You don't even need to gesso it again. Let it dry. Let it dry into the touch. What you don't want to do is take a canvas and say, I just don't like that. So I'm going to wipe this one off and start over. Well, what you don't want to do there is take one and do that and then put gesso on it. Now, Will it crack anytime soon? Probably not. Will it crack? Yes, eventually it probably will. I shouldn't say probably. I, I think it will um, crack. Because there's probably, even if you wipe it off and you don't thinner clean it, I don't even do this if I, I thinner clean them. I just let it dry and then go right back to oil. Um, you're going to get to a point to where you're going to have cracking. And it may turn out beautiful and be around for... 20 years, somebody starts looking at it and say, oh, it's cracking. And then they, they start tearing up because you you put some, uh, you put oil over acrylic. I'm sorry, acrylic over oil. Get that right in a minute. There we go. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then we can call that done. Next, and I'll do another seascape maybe next week. I'm trying to get, trying to get really good at them. Not just for on here, just for me. Now I'm gonna take some of the white, just a little bit, and some of the crimson. I still want to like a uh, a light, light pink. And what we want to do here is find our wave. Waves typically don't do this. Boom. Okay. Um, I can show you somewhere. So I'm gonna let mine spill this way. It doesn't matter which way it spills, but the shape kind of similar. Um, let it build gradually. Okay, and then it's gonna kind of come over like that, and then. We'll just kind of put this here. This is where you're going to put your crashing all along here, less here, more here. There's ground here. Usually you're going to have a little bit of an angle on these seascapes. Not typically going to be straight where the water's coming right at you. It's going to fall to one side or the other. It just looks better. But there's ground here. Of course, your eye goes right there. And then your little One thing about these little spillovers, if you can leave a few spots that don't have a ton of white, it looks better. This gives that separation between your your splashes you're going to put in and the um, spillover. So you've got your your build up kind of coming over, um, and then you're splashing over. The biggest thing I see people do in classes, especially in newbies, myself included, sometimes even still is you make this part way too big or you make this a weird shape and it just doesn't look right to you just envision somewhere down here there has to be sand for that to be crashing like that now there's crashing back here it's crashing on the water but there always has to be something for the crashing water to hit whether it be actual water or sand for us today it's going to be sand so there's imaginary sand somewhere about right here if we put our fan brush kind of in this direction and then all this would be sand probably in a rock, right? So that's the best way I can kind of describe what we're doing. We'll just get rid of this. Could have just left it, but we'll get rid of it. Don't put that on your canvas. <laughs> you probably don't want that one on your canvas. A little crimson. I'll probably put a little sienna back in there in case I want some of that to be dirt. All right, we're still recording. I'm always worried I'm gonna turn this thing off. I think I told you last time I, I did a video and I didn't record it. I thought I had to record her on one, but it didn't. So, all right, let's take a fan brush. You can use the filbert for this. This is that old fan brush I cracked, um, busted out in that other video. Look what it's doing. I don't like that. Very weird, but I'm going to use it. It otherwise it's good, but it's got a curved shape to it. That's a very very old Bob Ross fan brush, so it should be better than that. Oh, somewhere in here, there's going to be a little buildup of that wave, and we can change it. And then over here, it's going to just like that. Okay? You know, we'll probably, you can put this, but you don't need to. Right? And there's your eye. Over here's our rock, right? This is a simplified wave. You, you know, you could get really fancy and start putting crashes down, um, or this starting to fall over, but I wouldn't when you're first starting out. Not worth it. But we don't have too big of an angle. You don't want to start down here and try to build up and then crash over. Typically, near the land, water's not going to do that. Okay? Water doesn't go at hard angles. It's got to have a nice flow to it, flow out, and crash down to the sand. And I'm not the best at explaining these things. Like I said, I don't really have that much experience with the beach. So I'm going to need to grab probably... I think I'm gonna make a lavender for the dark. So I'll use Prussian blue and crimson, of course. That'll make our lavender. And that lavender will make us some foam, shadow foam, and it also help me to get some dark back in here when I need it. And it will go with the crimson, right? All right, we'll take our knife, left that son of a gun off, and crimson and blue. Ooh, pretty. I'm still going to put a camera on my palette eventually, guys. But it's just... If you've ever seen anybody mix palette... You, uh, not mix palette. Mix paint. You know what I'm doing here. Just turn the paint over. 
I'm not making any uh, serious color. I mean, look, it looks like Prussian blue, but it's actually a, a, a lavender. The blue lavender. And I'll test it with a little bit of white and see if I like it. Now, if you think it's a little too lavendery or something, you can put just a touch of black or maybe a touch of Payne's gray, or if you've got Ross colors laying around, touch a mountain mix in there and it will dull it down a little bit. All right. So what do we want to do first? I always approach a wave, especially when I'm teaching, to do the harder things first. The hardest thing to get completely right is that little eye. And when I say right, there is no definite on that. It's not like, well, I'm definitely not an expert at this. I'm going to take a little bit of that color, that pinky. You can see it's not white. And I want to just scrub in. We'll call it an eye. Now, don't worry about that line. You can put that back. You want to have a little bit of that, that light color trail off over here. Something like that. Not that much over there. If you get too much, we can, I'll show you what to do. I've already got too much on mine. And then you just want it nice and bright right in there. Wherever we're going to, wherever we're going to put that eye at. And then I've got a little, again, a little blender brush. You could use a one inch, no big deal. When I'm, I'm just using this because it's here and it's soft. I like these soft brushes for this. I'm going to start right in that eye. And then I'm just softening it. Softening it out and I'll soften it out over here. Again, I've gone outside my line. Big whoop. No big deal about that. Down here, you want to let that, that color kind of go into the dark. Okay. Make it a nice bright eye. We don't probably need it that dark. Um, I'm sorry, that light. For this one, so if I wanted to, I could take a, a brush with a little bit of crimson on it and work that back. It's not necessarily a circle. A lot of people think of it as a circle. It's just light coming through that. That's where the water is the thinnest. That's all that's happening there. It's not magic. Not magic to paint it either. Okay? That's just the thinnest part of the water is right in here, right in here. Probably a little bit too much away. You want to let this fade off a little more gradually. Bigger here and then get very thin right through there. But I didn't. It'll still work. And then you can actually use some of that to your advantage. You can start thinking of that wave as that wall that's built into it. So you can start pulling that wave down. We don't need that much of an eye. So we'll get rid of a little bit of that eye. There we go. And, and I know it looks really weird right now. But we're building it piece by piece. And we're building it the way I like to build it. The way you like to build it, put it together different ways. Watch me or watch people that are better than me. If you ever want to watch somebody build a seascape and you want to get good at seascapes, you don't want to just watch me do them and, and think I'm the master here or anybody really that's not been painting that long. Find someone that's excellent at seascapes. I can tell you right now, if you find a lady named Joyce Ointner, uh, she's got videos on uh, that you can purchase if you go to her website. Uh, unfortunately, she's passed, but still is a master to me at, at seascapes. Uh, and there's tons of others. So Joyce Ointner would be one to look look up. She was on Bob's show when she was very young. And uh, she did a... You look at the painting, you're like, oh, that's not very good. She was just doing the anatomy of the wave. Uh, but you should check out some of her seascapes if you really want to see somebody that can paint. So I've got some white, and I've got my funky fan brush. Can you all see that? It's like a bird. I don't know if I use it this way or use it this way, or just go get a different fan brush. But... We're going to go ahead and put this in, and then we'll put the rest of everything in around it. All right, so we got our eye in. We want our splashes in. Our splashes just kind of come in like this. I have titanium white and a drop of liquid white. What you don't want to keep doing is going over this. You want to overlap that stroke, let it kind of fall. Overlap the stroke. I'm trying to figure out which way is the best. Overlap the stroke and let it fall. And notice it's falling with the angle of the wave. It's not going like this. You never go straight down. You kind of let it spill over a little bit. When I get over here, I'm going to let it kind of angle that way a little bit. All right, I think the, the smiley face is working the best. 
But notice how I'm not dragging all that down into the dark. You don't want to do that. It doesn't look good. Use some artistic license here. Does water do that? Absolutely. But let's be a little bit... We gotta, we gotta use a little bit of imagination here of what's happening. Now you start painting seascapes with Joyce Ortner, you're gonna paint more realistic seascapes. And you're gonna be amazed at what you can do. They don't look like these, they're like other people paint in, I hate to call it Bob Ross style. That's kind of what it is. I mean, that's where a lot of people picked this kind of seascape up, myself included. So, now, you can play with this barely at all. Because if you just keep going over it, what happens? All the white on top just kind of mushes into one color. But, I mean, if you, you want to just go back and whew, just a couple more there, it's fine. All right, so we got that done. We'll take our filbert again. And remember the wipe my white out of here. Do you remember the... Um, lavender that I said I was making up. We're going to go to that next. And just a touch of white in it. Now I want it to be pretty dark. Pretty dark, pretty dark. Now, this is kind of changing the paint. I may actually change my mind here. Yeah, I think I might. Oh, I was going to show you guys something cool about this brush. This is, again, we brought this at an art yard sale with tons of Probably four hundred dollars worth of stuff for fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred, fifteen dollars. But whoever had this brush before, I don't think this is how that brush worked. But it must have been one of their favorite. They wrap wire around it to hold it together because it, it's kind of loose right in there. Now, you see that? I don't like that. So I want to get. I should have some Payne's gray laying here somewhere, hopefully, or a little black. I've got black here that'll work. I got ivory black laying here. Any kind of dark. I don't want it to be so blue because there's nothing else blue in the painting. I don't mind it being dark. So instead of just using that lavender, I'm going to throw some dark into it. Some black, Payne's gray, something along those lines. Make a, a more of a gray lavender than a blue lavender. Just going to gray that blue down is all I'm doing. All right. Yeah, now yeah. look at that. Look at the difference. Now that black just kind of grayed that down for me. Okay. All right. I got a phone call while I was painting. But a little bit grayer will be nice. And what we want to do here is just, we got the paint mixed. So we're going to actually wipe this back off and just use very, barely any paint. Barely any paint. And we're going to think about some crashing in here. Some splashing, crashing. And I'm just going to scrub it in. See that? I'm just kind of wiggling that brush. Now I get down here and be a little bit more loose with it. And you don't want it to be a straight line across. Do you need this? Maybe not, but I always do it. That's why I don't use much paint now. I want a little bit of it kind of come up into the background back there. It will make a difference over here. We'll darken that side up for us a little bit. And this is where you can kind of darken that edge. Remember I said I got it too dark? Or sorry, too light? Well, you can also do this first. I don't mind to do it at the end though. And I let that tail off. Even though I, I wanted to get rid of most of that light over there. But for me, most of the splashing is going to go and splash down here. You have to keep in mind, where is that land? There's a land piece right in here somewhere, okay? So we want to we wanna make sure we do that. All right, there we go. Now, clean that filbert, probably thinner clean it. Would be the best. And you may need to thinner clean it a couple times even. Oh, can't use that. 
started getting the one that had a little bit of liquid wine in it. I was like, that's loose. All right, we don't want this pure white. Again, we want to put just a drop of color in it. We want it bright, but you don't want it white. Never good. Nothing in nature is pure white. Snow is going to pick up any color. This stuff's going to be very dark. Uh, wherever you want to start, but we'll just start down here. Okay. And you're just going to kind of give it a little push up. Think of little tiny clouds, okay? And then what I would do is either take a one inch brush or a little blender brush, blend a little bit at a time as you work, okay? And you want your brightest spots to be there at the, right here, okay? I'm gonna kind of working, working those splashes in and then up in here, we'll just kind of, it's always good and I, I get out of the habit of doing it and regret it sometimes of working a little bit of blending in it as you work. You're putting a little bit of blending into your work here as we work down the, the splashing. Need a little bit more white. White and pink. Crimson to make pink, so I should say. And then right in here is some pretty bright stuff. And then we want to we'll try to just, we don't need much on this little part of the wave. We're just kind of put just a little bit. And then over here, we're just kind of being very loose here. Not perfect. Doesn't need to be. Keeping that little bit of dark in there will actually help define that wave. And I actually think the next few steps actually helps the wave kind of make the wave, really. Something like that. And then I like to skip down and maybe have another little layer of splashing without going too far. See how I'm pushing up on that? That makes that little splashing. Maybe up here. Okay. And then, phew, thought I knocked that on the floor. And then again, a little bit of, I don't mind to leave a little, instead of like clouds where you're trying to get rid of the, all the nice little bright spots, I don't want to do that on this. It looks better if you don't, in my opinion. It's my opinion. There we go. Something like that. And this is a very quick wave. I actually have started preferring waves on white canvases better than the black ones. I don't know why. I used to I used to prefer these, but I think you got a little bit more forgiveness in the wave on a white canvas. I don't know why I'm, I think that now. But it's the way it feels. Looks like it works a little bit nicer. But otherwise, there's your wave. There's your crash. There's your eye. We still got a nice bright eye spot there. So that's all nice. Okay. Uh, of course, you guys know that there's. This is odd. We're gonna put a rock right there. And now we get to do some of the detail work. Now I'm gonna tell you guys a secret here. Everybody thinks you have to finish these paintings in one go. Where everybody thinks you have to finish this painting in 30 minutes. It's like there's a race in the art world to create art. If you're having fun, if this takes you five hours, it doesn't matter to me. You guys know that. But one thing that I always recommend anybody do, especially if your canvas is really wet. Let it dry and come back and do this next step. It looks so much nicer. So we're going to put some little lines in here that's going to start making it look a little bit more wavish. So I'm going to take that white with a little bit of crimson. And this just this step goes so much easier if your canvas is dry. And you can also wipe it back off if it looks awful. So, all right. And we know that there's a little bit of... Actually, let's do one thing before I do that. I'm sorry, I'm skipping around. You know that's what I do. This will help you understand what's going on here. Helps me understand, too. I blame it on y'all. More for me than anything. A little bit of white and crimson. Just that pink color, light pink. Again, a little bit of on the knife like that. Let's go ahead and put one of these little guys in. And all we're going to do here is remembering that that's land right there. I'm pushing quite hard. 
You can see that. Let's just go ahead and put another one in. Oh, we got a rock here. I don't need to take it too far. But these all have to go at the same angles. Of, every bit of water has to work back into that ocean. So you're not going to have one all of a sudden run this way. Now, you'll see on the beach, sometimes patterns will get a little funky. But right next to this wave, it's all going to pull right back out. So uh, We may not have any sand. I put that down there. Probably won't do any. I, I enjoy this. But look how much I'm leaving behind. That's quite important. Okay? Quite important. And again, it's got that same little bit of an angle there. All going back to that water. And I've got a... Because I've got so much white on my fan brush right now, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to switch to a clean flat that was laying here. And I'll do this one first. So what you do with this, you don't just leave it like this. It looks kind of odd. You want to just kind of think about this water working back. This is a small wave. There's no crash in here. But all this water is going to work back to that one. See that? And you don't want to just do it everywhere. You want to kind of be selective about it and just move it all back in that direction. Okay. You can even move this around if you need to. Doesn't all have to be perfect. See how I brought that one out? Okay, and then like that. Yeah. Nice. And you want to leave a lot of dark here. Especially when we get up further away from the light. Oh, I don't know, right there. We may have a little bit of sand right there. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. Over here, we're just putting a little bit of working back that way. This water right here is going to, of course, work back in the wave. It's going to start kind of going up like that. Right in here. It's all building up. It's all building back into that wave. Rolling back in there. Now as we get further and further over here, this actually starts flattening down. So like over here, it's pretty much flat. That wall, you know it's bigger. It's going to start flattening down because it's got to. That's what's causing that crash. It's mostly kind of coming up and going over. Now it doesn't come back over on itself. That's not what I'm saying. But it just kind of builds over here flatter than it does near the eye of the wave. More up and down, I guess I should say. All right, now you can stop there. You don't really have to do the next step. I think on a nighttime seascape, sometimes that's enough. And if it looks a little odd to you, you take your blender brush or one inch brush, whatever you've got handy, and just kind of set that down a little bit. It's actually looking a little odd to me because it's picking up some of that uh, sienna that I put down for the sand. That's okay. I'm just softening that down, softening that down into something that looks somewhat okay. And then these, these actually build off of this too. These little, you've probably seen people paint these. I always kind of think of them just like little bits of, almost, they almost look like lightning bolts to me. It's that foam that's being pulled back up into there. Right, so and we can make as many of these as we want, or as few as we. Like I said, we've already kind of, kind of got these in here. Doing it the other way. Building that little pipeline, I guess. I'm not a surfer, so I don't know the exact terminology. I like to leave it a little chunky right there. I might blend it down just a hair. Almost lightning bolts, but not quite. And here's what I'm talking about. Over here, they start flattening a little bit. They're not so, um, so much like this. They're more like, like that. And they're all working off of that. So, however many you think you want in here. Looks like little veins of the water is all it is. And all getting pulled back up, back up.
Like I told you in the last video, I've been playing those Gods of War games and it reminds me of mythology and Poseidon just calling that water back. And then what I like to do on these especially is put some dark ones in. We can use the, um, the shadow color we used and then put a couple of things here I should show you. Shouldn't just show you, I should do them for myself because they'll look better. Uh, right in here, I want to have a nice defined dark edge. And it won't be just a line. I'll go back and blend that a little bit. But putting a little bit of dark back in here. Actually works really nice. I had a, little, I had a drop of paint there on there. I didn't tell you. But I actually just use usually just kind of go back with the dry on one of these. And just kind of mess it up a little bit. And then I can pull some little well, guys, off of there, you can also take a filbert brush and just kind of knock down what you need to in here. But you want a little dark line there, kind of blend it a little bit in, It'll make everything look a little nicer. Something like that. There you go. All right, and then we want a few of these little dark ones in here. Let not much paint on my brush right now, much at all. Any that are too light, we're going to kind of take out here in a minute anyway. Yeah. So however much you think you need, I almost think that's too many. So. You know what to do. Just kind of soften some of them down. So that, and you get an odd shape, get rid of it. So. Like that one, just kind of touch in there. There you go. I almost think it could have used a closer one than this. Like coming right in there. That wall's a little bit big from what I usually prefer to have in mind. All right, let's do a little rock over here. And we will just, well, we'll just clean this again. I like to use these. I use a Felbert for rocks a lot. And we use, I got that um, ivory blackout and just a touch of the, the lavender to kind of keep that same color in there. Oop, can't use that. <laughs> I got too much paint thinner in it. Right there, oh. Too much out. Can't put it back in the tube now. Make sure your brush is good and dry. Mine was still too wet. Now we can throw this on here. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What kind of rock do we want? We want a rock that kind of maybe a big old rock right there. And then just fill it in. We're going to highlight this a little different than I usually do. Kind of right there. Oh no, it exploded. went up a little higher. Dang rock. Now, our job is just, we put this black shape on here. Right? But then we have to decide, well, where are the layers of this rock? I always like to have a little rock like that. See how there's a little water in there behind that one? That little other leg of the rock. There we go. Maybe too big of a rock for that painting, but we're going with it now, right? All right. Now, what I've been enjoying doing is just using a fan brush to quickly highlight rocks. So we're not going to use a, 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 a knife. We're going to use a fan brush. So I'll clean our fan brush here. Or we're smiling fan. Still smiling. Dry her off. Got a paper towel here in the rag I'm just wiping on. And then we want to kind of keep the same colors, I think. Crimson and white. That'll be our highlight color for a rock as well. 
Kind of odd, yes, but it'll work. All right. I just, I'm going to take a little bit of this. Let's see what happens. Oh, right on the edge here, just kind of go tap. All you're doing is trying to find those right spots. And then the, the, the shadows. So I see it right there. You can do this with a filbert too. I'm just tapping the rocks on today. Okay. See how that's bringing that out a little bit. Don't need a huge amount of highlights on this rock. It is a nighttime seascape. Need a little bit on that top though. There we go. Now I'm just touching it on there, but you can start seeing the definition of that rock a little bit. At least I can. I hope you can on the video. And maybe, maybe right in there it kind of goes back up. Oh, right in there. Got to be careful because the the light is tricking me. It may may look like something awful to you guys, but right now it's looking okay to me. I just take a little bit of paint on that and work it work as I need to. You could do this with a flat a flat brush like a one like a like this one. Works the same way. Do it with filbert. If at the end of the day it looks like a rock, you have successfully painted a rock. It doesn't matter if you do it with your fingers to me. Yeah, it might matter to your roommate, spouse animal, whoever that you get paint everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes I push it a little bit harder, it leaves a little bit more of a mark. Okay. And as I get away from the light, maybe maybe there's a less. This is just finding the angles that you want in this rock. Whatever angle that rock is at or has, I guess I should say is going to indicate your shadow. See that? It's a little bright, I think, but if it gets a little too bright on you, go back with a little crimson over it. See, a couple of spots here that look a little bright to me. All right, see, and that's all you need to do. Um, I always like to kind of let, it, let them kind of combine sometimes. And then, if you wanted to, you could put, you could put some shadow color in there, like the blue. Then what I like to do is just take a brush. You could use a one inch, or two inch, whatever, and soften that down. Soften it. I'm using the little bunny brush. I'm going to regret this because I hate having to clean these. If you get a little brush like this, don't clean it like a normal one inch brush or something. Don't dip it in thinner and swirl it all around. Take some paint thinner on a um, paper towel and just kind of rub this thing on it. If you if you clean these like like Bob Ross would clean his big brush, you're gonna ruin the brush. And it's pretty soon after you get it. There we go. A little bit there. Maybe I see one more little spot. I wouldn't mind to have a little bit more bright right here. Right in there. Just a little bit. There we go. And then just, I'm just using, you can see I'm kind of using the back of that brush even. A soft little rock. And then if you wanted to, at the end of the day, we're almost done. Take some white. It's got some pink in it. Pull a little bit of that down. Over here, just a little bit. It's getting darker over here. We don't really worry about that. Take this one here. Got more of the color I want on it. Go across it. Off it. And. Come on now. I'm using two colors really. 
I got a mess here. I lost my little definition on that one, so I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. And then what I would do over here is just a little hit of a little hit of something there, maybe. To run back. Um, run here. You could take take that and just kind of let some little previous splashes kind of go up on your rock. Maybe I don't know. I don't know that that looks good. But you can have them there. One thing doesn't look good is how I did them. Turn it more on the side. There we go. That fan brush was looking really odd. They look odd. Just kind of get rid of them. You can put some of the little script liner things down here if you wanted to. You can do anything you want to, right? You know that. Um, do, 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 do. What else? Not my best seascape, but not too bad. Uh, trying to think. Anything else? Anything else we want to do before I leave? I'm going to put a kind of Some of those down here are bothering me, so I'm just smooshing them into the paint. There, that looks better to me. That stands out better. Oh, last thing. This is perfect for doing this next step, this little bunny brush. But you can also do it like we do snow. Do, do, do. Let me find some here. A little liquid white even works better. A little liquid white with just a touch of crimson in it. So we keep that crimson going. Watch this, just barely touch little misty things on here. <laughs> kind of looks like bushes almost, but it's not. It's not what I'm intending. Probably better just to flick it on here with your finger or knife, but it's the mistiness that shoots out of this wave. And you can just kind of put a little bit on the rock there. Just, uh, so we don't see this edge of the rock. Look here. See that, how it's splashing up through there? Maybe just a touch more. Always do a little bit right here. It's pretty bright right there, so you really don't see much, but try not to let it get into your eye. Yeah, maybe just a little bit all the way over through here, here and there. The only thing I'm not super satisfied with is my little dark line doesn't look quite right. It's not dark enough, I think, is what it is. Don't worry about it being a straight line. It doesn't need to be a straight line. You want a little bit of an angle there. Uh, anywhere else? No, I think that's good. All right, guys, there's a super easy seascape you can mess around with. Uh, pretty cool colors. And let me know what you come up with. Let's see it. Uh, use any color. It doesn't have to be red. Apparently, I like the, the blood red sea, though. All right, I will see you in a few days with something else, maybe something a little more inventive than two colors here. Everybody take care, stay well, and be kind to everybody, okay? See you guys.